Will Kazarin, a Nostr protocol developer and creator of the app Damas, which was the first Nostr based app to make it onto the Apple Store. Within two days, um, I was banned in China because <laughs> like the CCP, I guess, got wind of it pretty quickly. And they're like, oh, well, I got to stop this. <laughs> um, but it, it was it's been an interesting experience to see it just going through the whole process. Well, how many yeah. uh, how many downloads have you uh, seen so far? Uh, we're up to about 250,000. It went up to 24,000 in mainland mainland China in like a day and then that before wow. it got cut off. So if they didn't cut off China, I, I bet it would have would have been much much higher. If um, when you say okay, so it's cut off so uh people in uh mainland China can't get it anymore, but the people who have it can they continue to use it or yes. has it been rendered inoperative? They they can just use it outside of Damas and outside of uh the App Store, right? Like I remember when the relays were getting bombarded with Chinese traffic. Uh, because the app store did open there, uh, the 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 downloads on the store for for China dropped, uh, but the the relay that we run, the the Chinese traffic just sort of like remained the same. Yeah. Uh, so it, that's the thing, right? You don't need the same client. It doesn't matter if CCP doesn't like it anymore, right? Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. people will just run VPNs or Tor and get around it because the information uh, network is the same. Right. The, the client is just sort of like, you know, one more nice sort of experience and, and shapes how you absorb it, how you right. interact with it. But the information system is the same, much more, much like the Internet, right, or TCP IP. Like, I mean, the stuff is just flowing through. Um, you just find another way of tapping into it. Back to the China example for a second, because I think it's worth lingering upon since that is, you know, the, the prime example of an authoritarian, very powerful po authority saying- Second not, only to uh, Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook, right? <laughs> This is not allowed. I, I'm putting up here just right now the, the notice that Will posted uh, that it, his app had been banned in China and you see Snowden commenting down there, smells like fear. Um, but the reality is, you know, when I go to the global feed, which is like the kind of fire hose of everything that anyone is posting from anywhere in the world uh, to Noster, you still see like a ton of uh, Chinese posts. It's almost maybe even, you know, half of the posts uh, have, you know, Chinese characters on them. So clearly that's some evidence that this protocol is fairly censorship resistant. Yes. It's, yeah, it's going to be really hard for them to shut down all the relays because, for instance, because I, I was asking some people in China, I'm like, do you guys, are you guys running your own relays? And they, they told me yes. So there's there could be like a, a sub network that we don't even see that they're using within their country. And that's so like, that's one of, that's a big issue is when you go across the firewall, apparently, then um, yeah. they can start tracking things. But if they're actually running their own relays within their local communities, then they can communicate. Um, and, and we wouldn't even see that. Right. So, yeah, I, I mean, so um, think about it this way. Um, you don't really have like a, a global global feed, right? Like it's not like there's a single source, a single river. It's more like a, a pluvial system, right? So you have like multiple rivers, and they're all connected to each other, uh, mm -hmm. and and they can change paths too, right? So if somebody puts a stop in one, yeah. you can reroute that to some other relay, and you can have say like a, a mirror relay or a bridge relay uh, that uses some other sort of form of communication. Uh, uh, that is not like the main internet uh, uh, for you to to sort of create this interactivity between the two. Uh, mostly because this protocol is so sort of like simple and contained. It, it's it's pretty clever. So the, the thing that you you start to think about then is you know what are the choke points that are that that, that governments are going to try to use it. I mean, it seems to me that the the relays themselves would be the the target. Like like, there's going to be malicious actors, right? So, there's going to be people putting child abuse up there, or you know, scam type financial schemes, uh, trying to like the you know funnel money to terrorists or whatever. And then the government's going to get interested. Are they going to go and start shutting down the individual relays that host this stuff? Like, is is the relay operator going to be the choke point or the person held liable um or and is there any way to guard against that and, and make sure you're not going to get screwed over as the person that's hosting this content it's just like you know flag theory right same idea it's the same idea for bitcoin mining is you know as long as there is a, an economic incentive and that's why sort of like the bitcoin start to play into this somebody is going to relay that message somewhere else Right. So, yes, they can they can ask Amazon to take down a relay here. They can ask, you know, Herzl mm. like to take down a relay in Germany or whatever. But 
you you can't you can't block them all and they can all have a copy of the information so this one is going to be a tough one for governments to try to stop i mean you, you know you right. look at OFAC mm -hmm. compliance uh for bitcoin mine blocks right they they OFAC cannot OFAC is the stuff that it's essentially like the treasury saying hey this is a terrorist transaction you can't right. accept it, you can't yeah. mine it right sanctions violating most, yeah. Type things. yeah so most of the most of the miners like still do it right so it's no different than this i mean like half the world doesn't give a crap about what your government locally cares so they will relay uh and and you can attach that economic sort of uh interest or or incentive so that they they have a reason to do so but does that push people out of i mean like you guys are you living in in the developed world in oecd countries you know if they come after you isn't that going to have a chilling effect on uh, you know uh, on people who are either developing clients or or other pro you know uh, programs that lay on top of the protocols etc um and if they go to amazon i mean like if you know if the, if the us government if the sec or the ftc or the fbi says hey you know what you're harboring something and you have this you know you you make a lot of money having uh, you know web servers but you make even more money uh, and you have your freedom, you know, in the Amazon retail stuff is isn't that enough pressure to kind of squeeze the type of, you know, the type of activity you're talking about out out of the developed world? How How's the war against turrets going? How's the war against drugs going? It's always going to be about selective enforcement, right? These guys yeah. create broad laws and then they essentially only enforce against the people that they don't like with yeah. the current government in place. Hey, thanks for watching that excerpt from our conversation with NVK and Will Kasarin about Nostra and the future of the decentralized web. Check out the full interview in the description below and tune in every Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern to catch these conversations live and subscribe to Recent TV and hit the notifications bell to find out anytime our videos go live.